Welcome to another episode of Africa Farming. My name is Samuel and of course this is Africa Farming, a channel focused on new generation farmers and new entrants in farming who are willing to learn new farming practices. So if you're new here, take a second or two to subscribe and hit on the notification bell. If you've not watched our videos, kindly go back to our channel, scroll through and you know, pick a video that is relevant to you and take your time and watch and learn. Let's learn together. That's actually the theme of this YouTube channel. And to our avid subscribers, Asante Sana for always coming back to watch our videos. It is because of you that we keep growing. So today we want just to update you on what has been happening for the past one year. It's been a while since we've done an updates video of what is happening at the farm. For those people who have journeyed with us since the beginning, you all know that we started from a very small backyard chicken house where I stay in Kitengela. From there, we came and bought this farm. We fenced it and we planted pine trees together with uh, a live fence, basically careful uh, fence that is actually growing very well because our farm guy is very, taking very good care of them. From there, we came and, uh, you know, constructed a, a water tank because we needed a source of water. We are in a semi-arid area and water is of the essence because without water there is no farming so we actually had to you know uh, connect our source of water with our neighbor who has a borehole and right now we have a tank that has a reliable source of water so from there we actually did the construction of the farm guy house because we needed somebody to stay at the farm to be able to manage all operations within the farm so after we were done with that plus the toilet we actually did the poultry house as you can see on your screen we finished the poultry house and from what was actually bred in our backyard chicken farm or chicken house in kitengela we got the first batch after like three months and brought them here at the farm to start the breeding stock for the farm and it has actually been a journey and we've actually you know grown in leaps and bounds we actually got to a point where we had around 300 chicken 300 Kenyaji chickens, but we've been selling because of the excitement that comes with Kenyaji chicken and the demand that comes with Kenyaji chickens. We decided to sell. We didn't know that uh, people really loved Kenyaji chickens. We actually sold almost 200 of them. And at some point, we go to a point where we're like, we don't have stock, we don't have breeding stock. So as we speak right now, we have around 70 chickens in this uh, poultry house. So right now we are working on building back the breeding stock that we had initially to get to around 300, 400 before we now start thinking of selling again. Uh, this time around there is no excitement. And for those people who've watched the previous video, we've talked about bringing in curry improved chickens now for those people who would want to buy. We are not gonna sell our initial breeding stock that we've started that we started with in this farm, we're going to bring curry improved chicken that we are going to now sell to people. So from there, we actually finished and stabilized the indigenous chicken section of the farm. And we went ahead now to the sheep pen. And of course, those people who've journeyed with us know how we constructed uh, our simple sheep pen that can also house goats. Remember, we want to house around 500 goats and sheep. That whole pen is for that specific purpose. But uh, as I've told you, we'll be growing progressively. So we started by bringing in around 20 female ewes that will be used at the breeding stock. Now, one thing that I told you previously is that we want to keep doper sheep. But I realized through experience that you cannot get pure doper breeds here in Kajiado. Those breeds that you think are pure are not actually pure. So what we'll need to do is we'll need to crossbreed, keep crossbreeding every generation of the lambs that we get at the farm with pure blood doper rams so that eventually we'll get to that position where we have improved genetics that will help us get those doper breeds that we want to get as a farm. It will be a journey and I hope you guys will share that journey with us. You'll share this experience, the whole experience with us. For those people who are experienced, I've gotten some good feedback from most of you who've done the doper breeds 
around your farms and I've told us basically that you started by crossbreeding and that is the same journey that I would want to follow. Of course, you know our farm guy, Jackton. Jackton has actually been good. I don't know where he is right now. He's been around here and he's actually helped us a lot when it comes to, you know, building the structures at the farm. What a wonderful gift I got because I didn't have to go out and get some other people to do these whole structures. He built the poultry house by himself. He also built the sheep pen by himself. And I can attest to the fact that all these are actually above, above power, above the standard that is required. So um, the next thing that maybe we hopefully need to do here at the farm is the construction of the curry improved structure, which will come maybe in the next like three, four months. Then we also want to do what we call um, a structure, a water tower, because as I've told you, yes, we have a water tank, but it's not enough to do crop, you know, crop farming or shift cultivation. Remember I told you when we started, I told you we'll be doing um, mixed farming. So we've already started with animal or livestock farming, but we also want to do crop farming. So one of the inhibitors to that has been water. So we want to actually get the source of water that we'll do for that from a different source. And even if it means drilling the borehole, we'll be doing that. So in the next few months, you'll be actually seeing us do that. And after the borehole has been dug, trust you me, even settling here will not be an issue. Another thing is we'll be fencing out these structures. So we have the sheep pen, we have this section for the chickens. After the sheep pen, we'll have a section for turkeys, rabbits, you know, and all those other animals that, you know, can be domesticated. We'll first that out using chain link. And uh, at least this will be a different section. We'll have a road here. And then after this, we'll have some sort of, you know, a space or other land that will reserve specifically for planting crops that will be used for, you know, feeds for the animals. So some of the challenges that we've experienced here at the farm is especially for Jackton, who's managing everything. He's been planting pine trees all, all ar around the farm. And one thing that he's actually experienced as a challenge is what we call termites. And they've been actually eating the roots of these pine trees. So you just find your pine trees that you planted are just dying. So once we knew that it was uh, termites, we had to get, you know, the you know treatment that you can actually mix with the water that he uses to water the pine trees and i think so far we've seen some improvement otherwise that's it for the updates video that has been the journey for the past one year so i hope you guys will journey with us for the next one year and i'll be able to do an updates video once we do all these things that we anticipate to do so we just pray to god that he opens ways and doors so that we can do all these things and you know but sometimes you might foresee to do things, but it, it's up to that guy at the top to tell you, yes, go ahead and do it. If he doesn't want you to do it, <laughs> you won't do it. So let's just pray that our plans are in tandem with God's plans for us and we'll be able to do them for you. That's it for us today. Changamuka, Naukulima. Bye-bye, bye-bye.